this video is proudly sponsored by Newtype. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewtypeHQ.com and use the link below to help this channel out for future builds. When my fans ask me, what was your very first model kit? What inspired you to get into the hobby of Gunpla? And the short answer to that, it was never Gunpla. In fact, I absolutely love starships, but the one starship that I've always wanted to build and custom paint to my heart's desire was always the USS Enterprise Refit. Well, my dudes and dudettes, we have hit another momentous milestone for this channel. Not only today marks the five year anniversary for this channel, but we have hit 50,000 subscribers thanks to your guys' continuing support. And I hope you guys can join me on the journey of hitting 100K in the next four to five years. But I know you guys are asking yourself, why are you celebrating this momentous occasion by building another Federation Starship? Well, the answer is real simple. A lot has happened in the last two and a half years for me personally. I have lost a lot of close friends and family due to you know what, and this model kit has been sitting in my backlog for exactly five years. So I am not waiting any more longer to build my all time Federation Starship. And if I don't build it now, I most certainly will regret it for the rest of my life. So why don't you join me on this journey of building the USS Enterprise refit? And at first glance, when you open up the box, you get this massive saucer section disc. I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I bought this model kit literally five years i just bought it on impulse but when i look at it now with the big goofy smile on my face i am just ecstatic i love the surface detail i love the fact that it's bigger than i expected and at the same time this is going to be my third biggest model kit that i've ever done onto this youtube channel so i know the perfect spot to put it in my house next up we get the water slide decals and these decals are fantastic. If you're not comfortable doing Aztec decals, they got you covered. You get your choice between a nice cool blue with a nice mint chip, depending on which version of the Enterprise you want to do a custom paint job on because it went through different alterations in the last six films. Also, you get different choices of the registration number, which is the NCC-17001, which is the classic refit, or the NCC-1701A. Next up, I'm going to be adding some additional photo etching pieces on certain key areas, uh, either on the secondary hall or on the saucer section. I just want those to make this those areas pop out a little bit more than they normally do on this particular market. Next up, we actually have the actual warp nacelles, and these guys are long, literally as long as my forearm, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I just love the detail on this, and it looks really, really cool looking, and it's just great. Followed by the secondary hull, which you get two different alterations if you want to go. So I believe the one on the left is more focused around the motion picture, while the other one is more geared around the Enterprise that led up to Star Trek 4, 5, and 6. So it's nice that this model kit gives you two different variants to work with if you want to make two different styles of Enterprises. Next up, we have the pylons that are going to hold up the warp nacelles to make that nice little wing section shot. Next up, we have the action base that comes with a very long, strong rod that's going to hold the Enterprise upright, and then a great deal of surface detail on the action base itself. There's definitely areas I'm going to put some emphasis on making these windows light up with some custom LED lights, but I definitely want to put some micro switches to have full control of certain LEDs. Next up, we have have the deflector dish which is definitely going to be the key part of the enterprise and make it look absolutely great followed by a nice little brief look of the actual bridge section that sits on top of the hull followed by next we're going to have the additional pieces that are going to sit on the side part of the saucer section which are going to be the windows and a handful of runners that are going to be inside there which are going to be for the shuttle bay now let's talk about briefly of the instruction men now for those who've been following this channel for quite some time you know that these star trek instruction men are as glamorous and very pretty like you would expect from a gundam model kit but this one's very special it actually gives you a complete layout on how to put the actual runners together and at the same time really advises you what areas you need to glue together permanently this is not a snap together model kit by no means means when you put things together they are going to be permanently glued together so make sure you do your research on what kind of glues you want to work with but what's really great about this model kit it gives you tons of options to make it to your own personal customization and that is heavily emphasized when you get two to three different variants of shuttle crafts that you can choose to put inside the shuttle bay when it's fully constructed which is absolutely great now on the other side of the instruction man you get a complete guide on where you're going to be placing all the water slide decals and at the same time a very brief glimpse on where you're going to be doing some custom painting now this chart right here for the actual paints is kind of a bit overwhelming. So when it comes to doing specific colors, such as the camouflage gray or the duck egg blue, you're going to need to look at some tons and tons of references of the Enterprise to really pull those off because one light blue is not accurate to the actual duck egg blue that you really want to work with. So do your research and do your research and due diligence because it can be a bit stressful. 
Now, full disclaimer, I just want to let you dudes and dudettes know that this video is not going to be your classic 20 to 30 to 45 minute long video. Unfortunately, this is going to be close to a 50 minute video. A lot of it has to stem to the fact that due to my new job schedule, I don't have a lot of time to edit. So the video is going to be slightly longer than normal. Um, there are going to be a lot of inconsistencies during the process of this build. So I do apologize if some parts a little bit confusing because I'm actually going to be building two different enterprises side to side. One enterprise is actually going to be done traditionally with the whole inner part and under part of the saucer section completely flat black to help reduce that kind of weird ghost effect that you would normally get when you put bright LEDs in there. But one enterprise section is going to have a slightly risen enterprise bridge while the other one's going to have a standard bridge but still pull it off the registry number that you would normally get in the movie. Movie. So I'm gonna do some custom cutting around the rim section of the window so that way I can put a bright LED light behind there. And for this particular bridge, we're gonna be slightly rising it just a little bit higher so that way you can make it look really dynamic looking. Now I understand why when people actually did this design, the bridge looks really awkward when it's slightly elevated. In fact, it looks very strange. So that's why they went with the low profile look for the bridge section. So that way it pairs up with all the other feature lane films. But there is a brief section in the motion picture as well as sections in Star Trek 2 The Wrath of Khan where the bridge section is elevated in a certain angle so where there's a bright LED light that's shooting downward to the actual hull section where it lights up the registry number. It looks really nice but as you can see here from early test just putting that in with the actual clear runner that's in there it just lights up the actual bridge section like a light bulb. So let's say we take this out slightly rise up a little bit higher and then put a bright LED light in the front and as you can see here you get that nice little cone section. There is some drawbacks with this particular effect. Not only it's going to be very bright but at the same time you're going to get that weird twinkling ball of light effect when you do some photo shoots here and there or even when you do recording. So we're going to do this part first. I'm going to cut off these nubs then I'm going to do some light, slight measurements to see what I need to do to make this guy a little bit more higher. I'm going to use these good old polystyrene pieces that I used on my previous kit bash build of the BT-7274. And then just kind of eyeball it at this point so that way I get the right kind of elevation that I want. And then just work off of that. And then mark the areas that I want to slightly elevate it so that way it hits the exact same measurements so that way it don't cause any kind of problems down the road. absolutely stellar is now time to install the shuttle base section back of the bridge. Now I'm going to use a handful of actual photo etching pieces that I've had for quite some time to really pull off those areas that have a great deal of surface detail and then once I get these natural nubs off of the back of the bridge section I'm then going to be installing that into the back and use an additional spare piece that I had from a polystyrene to glue it off to that lower back section to give it some slight elevation. Now it does look a little awkward and it is a little off centered. That's going to be using a great deal of the sand loop flat from from good old gunner primer and then go into a circular pattern. You don't want to go in a left and right pattern, you want to go in a nice circular pattern so you can get everything sent down evenly. Once that's done, I'm using some good old fashioned Vallejo putty to block any areas that are going to create any kind of light bleeding and then once that's done, now I can get this guy ready to get some prime time painting. Now I'm going to hit this area with a flat black and then hit it with the actual flat gray to pull off that effect. Well, 
Well, all right, this is looking really cool. Now that the dimensions are done to my specifications, it's now time to install the LED lights into this bridge section. So I'm gonna be drilling out two little small little holes in back of the aft section of the bridge to install some fiber optic tubing. And then after that, I'm gonna be installing some chip LED lights in the very front part of the bridge. So that way it can light up the actual saucer section to the way I want it. But in my time of actually installing this particular feature, it does not pull off the effect. So I would really recommend you go with a Dika LED lights from Evans and signs to pull off this look. Well, all right, that takes care of bridge number one is now time to tackle bridge number two. Now, bridge number two, I'm gonna go a little bit more all out on this particular one. So as you can see here, I've already installed the fiber optic tubing for the back section of the bridge, but I'm actually gonna be installing not only the Pico LED lights to light that area up, but I'm gonna add an additional LED light, Dika LED light in the very front part of the actual bridge section, followed by an additional chip LED light that's gonna sit in the very back of the bridge where I'm gonna be installing a strobe LED light to create a nice little bursting effect. So here we are again, I'm going to be giving you two different alterations on how to actually paint the impulse engine in the back so that way you get two different options. So as you can see here, I've already masked the area with some Tamiya masking tape. I'm going to be actually doing these photo etching pieces on the side for the second version of the impulse engines, but I'm just going to show you how to do it. Now when it comes to this first version, we're going to be hitting that area with Tamiya clear red, follow up behind it with a Tamiya flat white. What the flat white is essentially going to do is going to create a diffusing effect so that way you don't see the uh, bright LED light behind the clear red so you get different types of contrast Well, all right, that takes care of scenario number one. Let's work on scenario number two. Now, the process for this is going to be exactly the same, but with a slight twist. Instead of hitting that area with a Tamiya clear red, I'm going to be hitting this up with a smoke clear color. Now, the reason for that is because I want to make sure I have like the look how the Enterprise looks when it's in dry dock, not fully lit up. There's no clear red behind it. It's just a cold dead start and it looks really dynamic looking. So the reason why I gave you two different options is that way you have two different types to play with. So if you have the photo etching pieces and they're already painted and they're ready to go, it'll look great in front of the red. But if you want to go with a cold start look for the Enterprise and make it look just like how it is in the motion picture, go with this alternative. To, but still to pull off that nice bright red effect for the impulse engines that really look really dynamic like in the movie, well, you're gonna need to stick in a nice clear red piece behind there later on. And I'll show you that later on in the video. Okay, so for the navigational light that sits in the very bottom of the saucer section, I took the liberty of installing one bright LED light in the very front and a small selection of small LED lights around the remaining areas. Now, as you can see here, I did the exact same technique like I did for the impulse engine. I painted a lot of these particular clear areas with a nice flat white to create a nice great deal of light diffusion so that way you don't get the twinkling effect. But this here comes the next challenging part. This is going to be for the, I guess it's called the officer lounge on the Enterprise, and this sits in very 
back section of the actual bridge. Now, this part is optional if you want to go all out, but the next challenging part here is actually cut out these little nub areas that's going to be vegetation. So, luckily for me, Burbank Hobby had these nice little brush sets already ready to go that's going to be the additional vegetation effect that's going to sit right here in these little cone sections. So, I'm going to cut them out first. so that concludes option number one when it comes to painting the saucer section for the enterprise very straightforward now option number two is going to be very tricky at the same time it is a very well known effect that has been done in the model kit community for building starships it is called the raytheon effect now essentially what you're basically doing is you're taking a silhouette shape of the piece that you want, in this case, what we're gonna be using for the registry number, you're taking that shape itself, you're then taking it and place it underneath the saucer section in which you want to illuminate the actual registry number itself, place it there with some good old masking tape that you have lying around so that way it stays firmly in place, and then you're gonna hit that whole entire remaining area with a black primer. Now, if it's done correctly, you'll great. It's gonna create a nice little sharp look around it, but at the same time, you can easily soften up the edges with some good old black primer lying around if you have some from Vallejo or from Tamiya.
So when I had some free time, I wanted to see what LED lights would be great for the window sections on the Sasha section. So I'm gonna be rocking out with Tika LED lights to make these guys look really cool. Now for the lower half of the Sasha section, I already took the liberty of installing the navigation lights and the actual light thrusters that sit at the very bottom. Now as for the lower half of the Sasha section, I'm gonna be using a ring LED light that sits at the very top of the Sasha section lighting downward to make this area light up. Now when it comes to the navigation lights blinking, I'm gonna be using Evans Design's Sync LED light circuit. This is gonna be great lighting up close to four to six LED lights. Lights. I want to keep it like around six so that way I don't burn out the circuit. As you can see here, I've already taken the liberty of actually already installing the additional thruster lights that are going to sit at the very top and the very bottom of the actual saucer section. Now, as for the remaining parts of the actual Enterprise saucer section itself, this part is going to be exactly the same like you would see at the bottom. One green on the left, one white, and one red on the right. These are going to be for the navigation lights that are going to be connected into one circuit. So as I was getting ready to lock things down, I noticed that I didn't take the time to actually paint the officer lounge like you would see in the Star Trek The Motion Picture. Me personally, it's a very minute detail that I personally am not going to be looking after when I'm actually done assembling this model kit. So I'm going to be sticking in a DK LED light to cover up that area. So as I'm getting the bridge prepared to be painted, I want to take a step back and make sure I got the electrical wiring set up. So the bridge light and the backlight are totally fine, but the strobe light is going to be the part that's going to be extremely crucial. I have it split off into like a butterfly uh, circuit effect, so that way not only I can light up the bridge, but I'm going to light up the back part of the warp nacelles that sit in the very back of the Enterprise secondary hull, and then one little strobe light in the very bottom that sits at the stomach of the Enterprise, lighting up the equivalent of four LED lights. Pushing it past five will not only reduce the brightness but at the same time put a strain on the actual circuit board which is something I don't want to do. Expected, but all the extended wire is properly labeled and ready to go to be installed on the secondary hull. Now to do a quick LED test to see everything works and everything works absolutely phenomenal. Now comes the most challenging part and one would think it would be the impulse engine but it's actually going to be lighting up the registry number that sits in the very front of the USS Enterprise refit. Now like I mentioned before I'm going to be doing something drastically different. Instead of just putting a ring of LED lights that are going to sit around the rim of the saucer section I am going to actually once again use the shape of the silhouette that I use to actually block out this section when it comes to priming and actually take a cardboard shape of this piece and place it at the bottom. I'm going to be actually take the LED light strip itself and put it around the outer rim 
of this particular sheet and use an aluminum foil to act as a sense of a mirror to refract the light off of the surface onto the actual saucer section itself. This is really good in practice, but at the same time, it is very risky. And at the same time, this aluminum stuff is really nasty to work with. So be careful when working with this stuff because it's very sharp. Okay, so we got the LEDs installed. Let's do a quick test. As you can see here, depending on the kind of light exposure, you will get different types of results. When there's very little light, the saucer section lights up just nicely. With very little light, not so much. But with the right kind of temperature light displacement, things will still look really nice. Now comes the next challenging part, and that's actually installing the additional blue light that's going to sit in the very back of the saucer section. I was originally going to go with a 30 millimeter bulb, but I ended up switching up with a Pico LED light at the very last minute. Alright, after investing close to four and a half weeks trying to get all the electrical wiring done, I can now get started to paint this bad boy. So, here's a brief little history lesson when it comes to painting the Enterprise. There has been a huge debate, I mean a huge debate that's been going on for almost 30 years, where the Enterprise has been a bright white, a light gray, or even in some cases a very low to mid yellow yellow. Now that's pretty much due to the light exposure that was done on the actual film model. But shockingly enough, the Enterprise itself is actually a very, 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 very light gray. Essentially what I end up doing is I'm gonna actually fill up this reciprocal with up to the five millimeter point with Mr. Hobby light thinner, followed by the actual Mr. Hobby light gray up to the five mark so that way I can get a good consistency of gray. And then once I get the consistency just right, I'm then I'm gonna add an additional four to three of the Mr. Color MS White. Now, when you put these together and give it a good shake a shake you will be shockingly surprised of the kind of results that you would get. It is actually a nice white, but at the same time, an extremely light gray, like how we see in the feature length film. Again, this is actually done close to what how it was done on the actual full feature length film model. Now, down the road, the Enterprise did go through a drastic change when it came to the color scheme after the third or fourth film, but this is how it originally looked back in the day in the Star Trek motion picture, Star Trek 2, and actual Star Trek 3.
All right, my dudes and dudes, we have finally reached the realm of Mark's design. And what I mean by Mark design is these fantastic folks have actually come up with a fantastic template to pull out the Aztec decals. Now, you're asking yourself, what exactly are Aztec decals? Well, essentially, the Enterprise refit from the motion picture had this beautiful pearlescent design that was completely distributed all around the whole entire ship give you a nice color temperature between blues and golds and greens and reds. Very subtle, but at the same time, very beautifully done. And thanks to these guys from Mark Designs, they have actually designed a beautiful template and tutorial system on how to do it. Now, this part itself is very expensive. At the same time, if you're a big diehard Star Trek fan, this is something you really should really invest to push yourself to actually purchase. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna be masking off the bridge as well as masking off the rim section of the Enterprise. So that way, when we actually do some custom painting for the actual Aztec paintings, we will make sure that area is gonna be fully protected. But before I get started, I'm gonna practice around the ring section of the bridge. Okay, now that I got this area fully masked out to do my Aztec painting, is now getting into the nitty gritty of explaining what I'm gonna be using for the Aztec colors. So I'm gonna be using these taxidermy supply paints that have been generously recommended to me by an extremely well-known custom Star Trek builder by the community named Admiral Buck. And he strongly recommended me for actually working with these particular paints. Why? Because they are airbrush ready, they're already pre-diluted, and they're actually really easy to apply onto the surface. Now, there is a catch when it comes to working with this pearlescent paint. When you're actually applying this onto the surface, the idea is to gently put a light coat of your choice of paint onto the surface. You don't wanna to go too hard and applying too many layers. That's not the purpose of doing this pearlescent texture. The idea is to put a nice little thin coat on there and then you overlay it with other color textures to make the effect look really nice. success practicing my first Aztec texture onto the Enterprise saucer section, it's now time to pull off the Aztec pattern. Now, when it comes to the Aztec pattern, this is where things get kind of tricky, but at the same time can be incredibly fun. The stressful part for me personally was actually getting these specific designs cut out to the way they're supposed to look on the Enterprise hull and then getting them ready down the road to be painted on there. You need close to like 12 to like 20 of these particular shades for both on the top and the very bottom of the saucer section. So when you do this part, do not rush it. But before we put this template on, we need to focus on the next crucial part. And that's actually using this gray section that's gonna be at the very bottom. And then we'll work with the black Aztec textures on the very top. Essentially, what you're basically doing is you're working in layers. This gray area is gonna be the first layer where you'll be working with the Aztec colors, green and actual red, followed by the actual full Aztec texture that's gonna sit at the very top, which is gonna be basing off with the gold and the blue. So let's work on stage one.
Okay, it may not look much, but stage one and two is finally done. I'll let this sit and dry for close to about five hours and then come back and take these pieces off and then get ready on doing the second Aztec texture. Well, all right, now we can finally get started on stage two. Now, this part is gonna be a bit difficult to really explain, so I'll try my best to explain how to do this. So when you're applying these Aztec textures onto the hole, you wanna do a right to left texture. What this essentially gonna do is gonna create a nice, unique texture onto the hole. So how do we get started? Thanks to the good folks from Mr. Mark's Designs, it's actually a very, very simple, but at the same time, very rigorous process. So do yourself a favor, do not rush this process at all. Just have fun. So what you're gonna end up using is their transfer sticky paper, cut it out to the dimensions exactly how you would see here for the Aztec sheet itself, apply it on top of there, use the actual card that Celsa comes with the actual transfer sheet, and then use the actual uh, like a straight edge ruler and cut off the access plastic that's actually there so that we have a nice clean cut and then when you get it just right then you're going to gently peel it off the surface of the actual transfer sticky itself and then apply it onto the hull now this part was extremely stressful but when you do it just right and apply it onto the hull it looks absolutely incredible so remember go from right to left and you should be good Okay, after spending close to an hour right now, I'm gonna let this sit and dry for two hours to three so that way all the paint can sit in there just nice and then I'll come back and remove the actual Aztec stickers to pull off the beautiful pattern texture you get at the very end. Okay, so we're at the home run stretch. Now comes the most crucial part, and that is applying a coat onto the saucer section or for the whole entire kit overall. Now, there is a choice between applying a semi-gloss coat or if you want to do something a little bit more of a softer texture to the outer hull or to around the whole entire kit, you can go with a flat coat. Now, here is the drawback when it comes to applying a flat coat. If you apply a flat coat onto this beautiful fluorescent surface, it will desaturate it. So I would really recommend you stick with semi-gloss coat because it protects it and keeps everything nice and clean. So just like I did before with the top section, I'm gonna do the same thing at the very bottom and continue the exact same painting process like I did for the top section of the saucer.
concludes the journey of building the saucer section for the USS Enterprise refit and my <laughs> oh uh, as you can tell by the tone of my voice this was a very expensive and a very rigorous experience building this process especially when you're working on two at the same time this is where the challenge became like really fun and at the same time really really uh inconvenient on sunny aspects so as you can see here here's the first test of the actual saucer section with a very bright led light that just shoots straight out of the bridge and it looks great it's pretty damn accurate like you would get in the feature lane film and i think it looks great but for me i just wasn't a big fan of having the bridge being slightly elevated it just looked very awkward and then there was like the issue of working with LED lights. The two issue I had was with the chip LED lights. They were not bright enough to pull off the effect. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, I ended up just installing a Dika LED light to pull off the effect. So once again, very happy how it looked. Very, very proud of myself of actually making it look really, really nice. I really put a lot of work into working with the polyurethane pieces. I just didn't like the highly raised up bridge section so i ended up working with the low profile one because actually i just like the streamlined look of it now as you can see here when the actual bridge section is fully lit up i was slightly disappointed but at the same time extremely relieved that the actual effect still looks really really nice again i didn't want the bridge to be a little too over obtrusive i just wanted to light up just nice and clean and crisp i didn't want to have like this big like light bulb to stick it out the very front of it and at the same time i want to do some light modifications around the bridge section itself it was a little too gold so i made a little slight gray with a little hint of fluorescent as you can see here the captain lounge itself is not lit up because i end up scrapping that idea all together if I'm not going to show the officer lounge, there's no point of me showing the captain's lounge lit up, so I end up scrapping that. As for the whole entire saucer section, everything looks great, but I did notice that there were certain navigational lights that weren't turning on. Sure, the navigational lights in the very bottom were working just fine, but the front part wasn't turning on, and the actual navigation light in the very bottom was not turning on correctly. So I had to do some digging. I had to check to see if all my electrical wires were plugged in correctly, which they were. But then I got the thinking that I accidentally crossed one of the positive and negative leads inside the actual saucer section 
which caused the problems. So after doing a complete debunk, the saucer section in the bottom is lit up, but the navigational lights or the thruster lights themselves will not turn on anymore. The top ones are on just fine. The navigation light in the very bottom looks absolutely phenomenal, but unfortunately I lost the thruster lights in the very bottom. So let this be a lesson for anyone that built a Starship or any model kits that have LEDs. Please, 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 double check, triple check, quadruple check because you will make mistakes down the line. But like that, thank you dudes and dudes for watching this video. I do appreciate the love and support that you guys have been giving to me. I absolutely love it. I should have the secondary haul video done by the beginning or the end of August. This is due to the fact that my schedule is drastically changed a lot due to the fact that I'm working at a new full-time job. So content is still going to be coming on this channel. It's just going to be coming out a little bit more slower than normal. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching this long video. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Helps the channel tremendously. And I'll see you dudes and dudettes on the next build.